G'day friends and welcome to another one of my videos. Now today by popular demand, no not really, one of my subscribers asked me if I could do a Technoramus review of the Atomus Ninja 5. Now I've had mine for about six months now and I've been using it for different purposes and I wanted to share some of those with you. So if you want to find out if the Ninja 5 is a piece of equipment that should be in your kit, well then stick around. And welcome back. Now, before I started this YouTube channel, I had no idea that the external recorders like the Ninja 5 even existed. And I didn't even think I had a need for such a device, but given the lengthy videos I'm now creating and the lack of storage in space that I'm encountering, I thought this would be a great perfect solution for some of those user cases that I had. Now the Ninja 5 is made by Atomus, an Australian company known for its on-camera and portable devices made for live events and broadcasts. Everything from a 5-inch screen to a 55-inch screen with all the smarts to boot. Not only are these devices portable, but they are rugged and full of smart features that have made Atomus a very successful company and a reputable brand. But before I get into the tech specs of what makes a Ninja 5 such a great portable little device, I wanted to highlight the situations where such a device would come into play. If you are someone who records 4K or 1080p video from different HDMI sources, this would be a good device for you. Imagine having a portable recording device that is self-powered through battery and can receive and record practically any non-encrypted HDMI transmission. That is, you could record anything coming out of a game console, a computer, or a camera, but you couldn't record a Blu-ray movie as an example. If you are a videographer or someone just likes to record hours of video without the hassle of stopping and starting to change SD cards, someone who records outside in very bright conditions or expect more professional video quality to have a freedom of editing your videos in post-production, then I think this is a type of device that you're looking for. All right, so let's have a little talk about what's in the box. Now, obviously you get your Atomus Ninja 5, it's a great little device, very lightweight without the battery. You also get uh, the AC power adapter with uh, international plugs so you can change it to your country. You also get um, a little adapter for the mains that go, that plugs into the back of the Atomus normally where the battery would go. So then you could just plug um, the power cord straight into this and then you can run your Atomus straight off the mains. And the other thing that you get straight out of the box is this hard drive caddy. Now this hard drive caddy is to um, put in a SSD hard disk drive and that then uh, can get plugged in to the back of the Animus right there. Okay, so this is the tricky bit. What don't you get in the box? Now, first of all, uh, you don't get a battery. So you can run it immediately from the mains, but if you want to take it out in the field, you're going to need to get one of these uh, Sony uh, batteries. Uh, they're quite standard, they're the MP ones, and you can get them as big or as small as you want. Obviously with a battery, if you don't have one already, you're going to need a battery charger, and that's going to help you, you know, have multiple batteries ready. You are also going to need a ball head. Now this is going to be integral for you to put this uh, on the top of your camera, especially when you're adding about vlogging or you just want to record uh, or monitor your sound. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. And uh, so that's going to be integral. The other thing you're going to need is the HDMI to HDMI cable. One side, the full HDMI goes into the Ninja 5. And the other side, depending on your camera, uh, you have to select the right one. So I've got a micro uh, HDMI on my N50. And so that's the one I purchased, but you can get variable ones if you have a mini or just a HDMI to HDMI, you need that. Now, one additional extra, because I uh, find it very painful using uh, hard drives and using that caddy, I decided to invest into this Atomos X um, 
hard drive that is um, an SSD mini. So it's a special format perfectly designed for the Atomos Ninja 5 so you can fit it in the back of the device and it won't extrude or protrude outside the actual device itself unlike the Caddy which is a little bit bigger and so that sticks out from the side. Now I um, obviously didn't think this through there is um, a, a port on, on the side there but what I didn't realize once I bought this that in order to transfer the images to my computer or sorry the video to my computer I was going to need some kind of um, dock and uh, the one that I had already for some reason didn't fit this drive so I had to go off and purchase uh, one of these sort of caddies with a USB-C so I can actually plug it into my Mac and transfer files over. And so those are all the things that you may need to consider when you buy a Ninja 5 because it's not a complete package and if you, all these other things are in the box it actually would get quite expensive. Okay, so I hope I haven't scared you off buying one of these devices already. There are see, some added extras, but in reality, the HDMI cable, the hard drive, and the device are probably the basic things you really need to get started. Now, in regards to features, the Ninja 5 can record up to 4K 10-bit HDR. Now, what does that mean? Well, it all depends on the type of camera you have. On the Atomos website, it claims that the recorder will eliminate the internal recording limits of your camera, but that is true from a certain perspective. The camera itself has to have the ability to send out the video in that resolution in the first place. And in order to have the ability to play with a grading, a play LUTs, and get the most out of HDR. Then a raw output like a log format is critical. Currently log formats for Sony, Canon, RE, Panasonic, JVC, Fujifilm and Nikon are all supported. So check your camera specs and the compatibility for log formats on the Atomos website. One nice feature is that the Atomos auto detects a compatible camera plugged into the HDMI port and sets the format automatically, which is pretty cool. The Ninja 5 receives the video from your camera or device via its HDMI port and it allows you to record that video onto the Ninja 5's hard drive in one of two codecs or at different frame rates. For example, you can record a 1080p video in 24, 25, 30, 50, you get the point, all the way up to 120 FPS for some supported devices such as game consoles and graphic cards. Which means that for you gamers out there, you can record your live action firefights and then replay them at 120 frames per second slow-mo. Enemy! Enemy here! Let's take him out. Fire on the enemy! Unfortunately, the same thing can't be said for the EOS M50. It would be cool at getting 120 frames per second at 1080p from that little beauty, but it just wasn't meant to be. The first codec the Ninja 5 uses is a DN times HR, which will allow you to save your files as a .mov to copy them from your Ninja 5 to your Mac or PC. The second codec which had all the Apple users super excited is the Apple ProRes RAW. This is a codec that allows you to record compressed 4K videos up to 60 frames per second at an incredibly high quality, but consumes less space traditionally than RAW video. This is a game changer, but unfortunately there are some caveats. You must have supported cameras that can output the right signal like the Nikon Z6 or Z7 and the Apple ProRes RAW format can only be edited in Apple's Final Cut Pro. So for those of you who are Windows users, this won't help you much until non-Apple video editors are allowed to work with the same format. 
If you are lucky enough to work with this format, you will be able to do some magical color grading and utilize its capability of recording 10 plus stops of dynamic range. Apart from those two major recording innovations, the Ninja 5 has a plethora of industry standard features that collectively make this device a class above the rest. Features like the thousand nits of brightness to allow you to appreciate the screen even in full sunlight, Full HDMI port for input and output with pass-through feature for recording game consoles or PC output while you play live. Internal audio recording from the HDMI port or the lining mic in input jack so you can record sound being captured by the camera's internal mic or an external mic such as the new Rode Video Mic NTG. The Ninja 5 also has a 3.5 millimeter jack so you can monitor your sound as you're recording it live in the field. That is a great feature for those of us who do not have headphone jacks in our cameras. I can't finish the video before mentioning the great operating system packed in this compact device. As a recording aid, the Ninja 5 checks all the boxes, focus assist using histograms or peaking, and other assists for exposure, HDR, framing, etc, etc. If you have the time to review the recording before it hits your editing program, the Ninja 5 also allows you to do limited edits and tagging on the device itself before it makes it into your editing software. You can view footage directly on an external screen and even apply temporary LUTs to see how the final product may look like. I really don't know what else to say about this device that would paint a better picture. It's a small, smart and really capable device. I haven't touched on the super pro features that as a tech ramus, I really wouldn't dare to discuss. But that's been my impressions of the Atomos Ninja 5 after six months. For a device that I didn't think I needed, it has become a valuable part of my workflow and I don't think I could really do without it anymore. And there you have it friends, my take on the Ninja 5 six months later. I hope you found this video informative. To see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon to trigger that Pavlovian response. And until the next time, ciao for now.